Today we'll have a look at a pen that was rather eagerly anticipated. I picked one up at a pen chalet and today we're going to have a look at it. Um, the pen is made by Monte Grappa. comes in this box. box has a, a, a little uh, very dark blue navy-esque uh, cardboard outer sleeve. In there you have the actual box. Cardboard box opens up, you have a little uh, a landing flap right there and then you have the actual box um, in the box is uh, it's nicely lined and you cannot take oh yes sorry you can take this part out and in there is uh, uh, there was the, the converter you get two cartridges which are actually uh, engraved with Monte Grappa and silver as a little instruction manual so a nice a nice box a bed for your pen as it were. Also special with this pen is the little polishing cloth. Nice that you get that along with the pen and I'll show you why in a second. Now it's not just a pen. There is the mule, the copper mule, the Monte Grappa mule and you also get a, a, a copper uh, mug tankard uh, etc. Because of course the Moscow mule is a cocktail so you get this little box and in the box is a tiny recipe for a special cocktail, the Monte Grappa Mule. Now, I don't personally drink alcohol, but if you do, you can always try it out and have yourself a special cocktail. Okay, I'm going to cover the parts of the pen. I'll tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and then we'll do a writing sample. Let's start at the very top of the pen. There is the date of birth of Monte Grappa as a company um, with a little uh, uh, laurel uh, crown. So uh, 1912 and I, I, I like that. I, it's, a, it's a nice finial, it looks, uh, it looks classy. Then we have the uh, uh, clip with the little wheel Monte Grappa does, as does uh, Omas, uh, as does Delta and some pens. It's, I, I, I hate to say it, it seems a bit of an Italian thing, but it seems a bit of an Italian thing. Now we have the center band here with Monte Grappa on it uh, and uh, here we have the barrel. Now, uh, interesting thing about the material, of course, it is copper. I'll come back to that in one second. Here we have the, uh, the section. The cap screws off. We have a nib, uh, interesting steel nib, interesting pattern. Uh, this is a medium nib. I'll come back to that as well. Uh, simple feed, uh, nothing fancy uh, section. Unscrews. And it's a cartridge converter filled pen. Uh, it is copper. There is some weight to the copper. Uh, it's not ultra heavy like brass, uh, but it definitely has some weight to it. Okay, two things to show. One is the clip, very tight, but with that wheel, it should work. It's pretty tight, pretty hard to operate, I find. Uh, and the second thing, of course, is what about the nib? Uh, I have tried a couple of Monte Grappa pens and I find all of them to write very finely. This is a medium nib, but it definitely writes more like a fine than like a medium, I would say. And that's a trend in Monte Grappa. I've seen that in all of their pens so far. Uh, is that necessarily a bad thing? Not really. You also know that if you buy a Japanese pen, often you end up with a nib that's one grade finer than a western uh, nib. This is a western pen though and it definitely has a, a finish nib. I also found the nib to be quite dry. It was definitely not the best performing nib I've ever tried. Um, so you, you'll see a bit of that in the, in the writing sample. Interesting thing about the material. You use copper and copper patinas. So when you get the pen it looks like this. When you use it for a while it starts to look like this. That's not necessarily a bad thing, that's just a side effect of the material being used. Hence the polishing cloth. So if you have a lot of time in your hands and you always want your pen to look like this, uh, you can uh, uh, polish your pen, have a lot of fun, and uh, you will end up with something shiny. Now I, I did that on just one bit to show you the, try and show you the difference. I don't know how well the camera is going to pick that up. But here I have the cap as it looks unpolished and then that's what it looks like polished. Of course it's very reflective but that's 
part of the issue with the material. But you should see the difference here in polished and non-polished. So if you want, you can always restore that sort of shiny finish of the um, pen if you prefer to do that. In hand, I found the pen to be fairly comfortable. It's not super long, it's not super short, it's a nice decently sized pen. If you want to, you can post it. It definitely becomes a bit heavier, but you can do that and it feels very robust that way. So I do like that. I've also not had any issues with the section. It's metal, but it's not super slippery. So it actually, it's not so much that it's textured, it just feels good in hand. Uh, I, I like it, and this is a pen that I could even use unposted. Uh, it's, it's, it shouldn't be much smaller for me for that, but it can be used unposted. So all of that works well. I, I, I think it's very interesting. Also, no, let me first say something about things I don't like so much. I'm not a giant fan of these nibs. They're finer than I think they should be. They're drier than I think they should be. And dryness is something you can fix by yourself, but you can't really make a fine nib that, that much broader. You can stub it, but of course then you're really altering the nib, the shape of the tipping, and not everyone is, is willing and, and brave enough to, to undertake that. It's a bit of an issue, I would say. I also don't really like the dryness. I, uh, I, I, I like a wetter nib, and I don't mind if it's a little on the dry side, but this is dry to a point where sometimes it hardly writes, and of course that is an issue. So that is something I would definitely, uh, I definitely hope Montegrappa will fix, because I've reviewed the Espressione that had that problem. Uh, I have recently reviewed a, uh, uh, I think it was a Fortuna, the Rainbow, yeah, that have the same problem, also dry, uh, and now this pen has the exact same thing again. Also, plastic feeds, is there anything wrong with that? If it's a good plastic feed, not really. Uh, of course, some of the other Italian brands, for example Aurora, uh, but also Delta and some of the models use ebonite feeds. I do think those just give a slightly nicer, richer inflow. Having said that, the pen is $375 currently at Pen Chalet. Uh, you can buy them from other suppliers too, but um, it's not very cheap for what it is, I think. Yes, it's copper, it looks nice, uh, you get a mug, so if you're a fan of the, the, the Moscow Mule drink, I can see how this would definitely appeal to you. Um, but most Moscow Mule mugs I've seen are sort of roundish. This is basically just a mug made out of copper. So it's nice, I don't think it's perfect. And $375, of course, is not uh, just pocket change. So is it worth it for you? For a collector of Moscow Mule stuff, definitely, for people who love copper, this must be heaven, because it's definitely an interesting copper pen. Also, it doesn't really give off that smell, I find, because the section isn't copper, so you don't get that, that coppery smell on your fingers. Definitely an interesting pen, and one to check out, but this is one, that if you are able to do so, I would really recommend to try out in a store rather than just purchase blindly online to see if it's really for you, if the nib works properly, etc. Okay, dimensions of the pen will be on the website as well as high resolution pictures. As always taken by the inimitable gourmet pens. I hope this was useful so far. Let's do a writing sample and I'll gladly see you later. Bye bye. Alright. There we go with the Montegrappa Mule. Um, the ink is Pelican Royal Blue mixed with something else. Okay, so it doesn't matter. It's not an ink review. It's just a pen review. It's Pelican Royal Blue and there's a little bit of turquoise in it. The nib is medium. Okay. So as you can see, it's a dry, skippy nib. Uh, also, it's very hard, very rigid, and I definitely would not call this uh, a medium. I really think this is more of a fine. 
fast writing. A lot of skips. Wetness, comma, lack thereof. Line variation. You can squeeze out some. And I think the advantage is that in doing so, you may actually open up the tines a little bit, making it a bit wetter. But you go because this looks a lot better. Um, so this is definitely a nib that I think would require a, a good tune-up before you use it. Reverse writing. You see it's still a bit wet, but then it starts to go dry again. So I, I, I can't say I find this the world's greatest nib. Alright. I hope this was useful. And uh, I'll gladly see you later. Bye-bye.